Praise the Lord, and welcome to Life Changing Faith Christian Church streaming broadcast. Man, though I really, really enjoy doing this, I do miss everybody. I miss you so much. Um, I just want to say thank you for your support of the ministry while we are away from um, the gathering place, the place where we gather, the place where we worship, the place where God is awesome and we give him glory. I worship the Lord with you. Just take a few minutes, just take a few minutes just to thank the Lord today. Thank the Lord that if you're watching this broadcast this morning, God has gifted you with this day. And in gifting you in this day, God has blessed us for purpose. And so we're here to gather the information and to, to use that information to help someone else or to pray for someone else. But we give God the glory. I also want to get a shout out to, amen, a fabulous woman of God, Minister Sylvia Hall, who got her degree. Um, man, I'm so proud of you, Sylvia. So glad that God has blessed you to finish. And you kept doing it. You kept going. And I'm so grateful for uh, your accomplishment. It inspires me, and I'm pretty sure so many others. But this morning, I want to bless you guys. I want to bless all those that are watching online. Thank you for, for joining in. Some of my old schoolmates, um, some of my old cool, uh, school, um, I mean co-workers from my job um, that I used to work. Uh, so glad to see you guys on. And of course, Life Changing Faith Christian Church uh, members and friends and family, welcome to LCF Streaming Broadcast. Have a powerful word for you this morning, a word of encouragement, a word of strength that we all need in this time as some places open up their venues and restaurants and stores and stuff like that. And I believe that um, we're right around the corner as we prepare. But how are you preparing? You know, get your heart right. Make sure your heart right. Make sure you have a good mind and you're ready to come and do what God uh, has for each of us to do. So we're not just looking just to come to church, but we're looking for God's purpose of what it is that he will have us to do in the time frame that uh, we have. So let's go into prayer. And after prayer, we'll get into the message. Father, we bless you this morning. I pray for everyone that is watching this broadcast this morning. I pray for those that will just happen to come on, that they will hear a word from you, Father. And Lord, realizing that, Lord God, even in my spirit of living, in my family, I want to thank you for our safety. I want to thank you for our health. I want to thank you for a roof over our head. I want to thank you for food in our homes. I want to thank you for cars to drive and gas and those automobiles to get around if we have to go somewhere. I want to thank you for faith. I want to thank you for faith in your word. I want to thank you that I have no fear, oh God, because this Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, but God has given us a, a, a sound mind, hallelujah, that we may serve him and, and love on him and honor him in this day. So I bless you this morning. I thank God for the gift of today. I thank God for the gift of living. I thank God for the gift of family. I I thank God for the gift of friends, but I pray this morning your strength in the Lord. I pray this morning you do not become weary during this pandemic or during this time that we are kind of like isolated from each other. I pray your strength be, 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 be increased in the name of Jesus and that you continually give God the praise and give him the glory and give him the honor. We worship you, Father. We, we bless you this morning, God. We, we honor you, Lord, not just because we're on streaming, but Lord, when we're alone in our homes or alone in our place of prayer and our place of meditation, I give you praise and I give you glory. I don't take this life for granted that my family is safe, my family is healed, but I pray for those who have lost loved ones through the coronavirus. I pray for those who have an empty seat, God, who, who, who have an empty bed, God. I pray for husbands and wives who have lost their loved ones. I pray for children all around the world, all around this country. God, I praise you, Lord, and I give you glory that, Lord, the way that I want to just say I thank you is through obedience to your holy word. So I ask you to bless everyone this morning, God. Cover them with the blood of Jesus Christ. May they cry out and repent 
in the name of Jesus and turn from their sins and honor the true and living God. Therefore, if we have, if we have committed any sins, if we have said anything that was not pleasing in your sight, we have thought anything that will cause our relationship with you, Lord, not to be as, as tight as it should be. Forgive us in the name of Jesus that each of us will repent out of our own heart and that we will give you glory that even during this time, God, we realize you're still in control. You are still God over everything. And so we're thankful and we thank you in Jesus' name that everyone say, Amen. Bless you this morning. God bless all of you. Truly, I miss my members. I miss, I, I pray for you diligently. I, I call and ask God to bless you and to watch over you and to protect you and your family. And, and this is, I believe this is just a rehearsal that, that really shows us where we are with God and show us what we really are trusting in. And my prayer is that you are trusting in the living God. And how do you trust in the living God? By trusting in the living word of God. Today's title is No Update Needed. No update needed. One thing I come to realize during this time of being separated uh, from my members and friends, but not separated from God, is that the Bible doesn't need to be updated. God, I'm going to explain what I mean by that title, no update needed. But many people I have run into over time have said that the Bible needs to be updated because it is out of step with time. And and I'm often confused when somebody says that because that's not true. Because I like to ask the question, if the Bible is, is outdated or needs to be updated, can I ask you a question? Is sin outdated? Is lying outdated? Is fornication outdated? Is stealing outdated? Is murder outdated? No, these things are continuing on. And the only way you can overcome these things is through the word of God. That It is not outdated. Every day we need God's word to remind us and to show us how we ought to live, how we ought to walk by faith, how we ought to trust God. And I know for a fact that many of you are going through certain things. Some have health issues. Some have financial issues. But I'm telling you, if you would trust in the word of God, it don't need updating. The same word that delivered them uh, 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 back in the days of Pharaoh and delivered them through the Red Sea. The same word that delivered them back then, the same word that was spoken in the beginning when God said, let there be, is the same word that is operating today in this dispensation of time. So if you would turn in your Bibles, please ha get your Bible and turn in your Bibles to Psalms 119 and verse 89. 119 and verse 89 in the book of Psalms. And <laughs> excuse me. Why have you online? I need you to listen to this word this morning because it's not the pastor. It's not the church building. It's not the, the, the fivefold ministry that's going to up, uphold you. It will aid you, but it will not uphold you. We're us going to uphold you during difficult times, during times of stress that some may have, during times of trouble is the word of of the living God. We must put all of our faith and all of our trust in the word of God because the word of God will not fail. So let's go through these points and let's look at what do I mean when I said no update needed. In Psalms 119 and verse 89 and, and the psalmist says forever, forever, Eternity it could be their eternity. Oh, Lord, your word is settled in heaven. And so if the word of God is settled in heaven, remember the remember the uh, Lord's prayer as it is in heaven. So in earth. So if God's word is settled in heaven, it is also settled on earth. Man cannot change it. Political correctness cannot change it. The word of God remains faithful because God is faithful. If the word of God is not true, then God don't exist. 
And so if God don't exist, you can live any kind of way you want. There are no consequences for your actions. There's no consequences for sin. But because the word of God lasts forever, there are consequences for our actions and our deed. And one day you and I must stand before God and give an account for the life he has so graciously given us. You have to give an account for your children, how you raised them. You have to give an account for how you have been an example or are being an example to your grandchildren or your great grandchildren or your friends or your family is important. But know this for fact. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Verse 90, your faithfulness endures to all generations. So God's word goes from generation to generation. God's word will never stop. God's word will, will, will continually fulfill what he has said. I don't care what man has said. I don't care whatever they, they, they come up with. The word of God will stand forever. And God is faithful to his word. He is faithful to perform what he has said in the word of God, which we refer to as the Bible. My, my life, the foundation of who I am as a man, the foundation of who I am as a husband, the foundation of who I am as a father and grandfather is based on the word of God. My actions do, does not reflect the world or political correctness. You know, I want to thank God for scientists, but scientists can only go so far. Sometimes I watch National Geographic and National Geographic said the world is 230 million years old and, and all of this. But what they're trying to do is say there is no God. But when I look at the order of things. I look at the order of the universe. I look at the order of the earth in the summers, a uh, spring and winter and fall. I look at how how generation from generation is 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 progressing. I, I see and I understand there is a God and that God that I see and understand it, it lasts and it will be for Ever. And so I understand that the word of God doesn't need to be updated. What it needs to be is downloaded. You need to download the word of God in your spirit and not just in your mind. And when I mean download, it's like when you get a computer and you download the word of God into, uh, say, a program into your computer. Once you download it, you can now operate on it. You can you can you can work through certain things on it. Well, when we download the word of God into our spirit and the Holy Spirit gives us revelation, we supposed to put it into action. We supposed to take that word and we supposed to operate by that word and we should live the word. Guess what? That God may be glorified. So right now, turn in your Bibles and turn to Hebrews chapter one and verse three, talking about the word of God. It is the power. It is the strength. It is what's keeping everything together is the word of God. It is not mankind keeping the word of get together. It is God himself keeping the universe and the world connected. Everything that is transpired, everything that is operating in the world as we know it, the sun that comes up during sunset, goes down during, when the sun is setting, I mean, when the moon comes out, is all based on the word of God. It is the word of God that is, that is keeping everything connected. The Bible says that God upholds all things by the power of his word. You can find that in Hebrews chapter one, and we can see it in verse number three, that God is upholding everything by the power of his word. It has nothing to do with man upholding everything. Man, in a sense, scientists can can look at DNA and he can kind of figure out, you know, this and that with genes and stuff. He can figure out certain things and he's trying to figure out a cure for cancer, which is a good thing. He's trying to figure out uh, 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 this coronavirus. Is there a vaccine that can be made? But one thing man cannot put in the test tube is when you're going to die. 
He cannot put in a test tube. Uh, 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 when you stand before God, you would either stand before God covered under the blood of Jesus Christ, or you would stand before God based on your own righteousness, which will not get you into heaven. So in Hebrews chapter one, verse three, look what it says. Uh, uh, um, I'm starting in verse one down to verse three. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the father by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things through whom he has made the world. God made the world how? By his word. His word upholds all things. Verse number three, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding, look, upholding all things by the word of his power. He uphold all things by the word of his power. Your very existence is based on the word of God. Your children, everything around us is based on the word of God. Everything that we see today is based on and is continuing and held together by the word of his power. It says when he had by himself purged our sin, Jesus Christ sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. And so we, the point that I want to make in this particular verse is that God is upholding all things by the power of his word. It's his word that is upholding you. It's his word that is keeping you. It is his word that heals us. It is his word that sets us free. It's his word that breaks the bondage of sin and domination in our lives. It is the word of God. That's why reading the word of God, meditating upon the word of God is so important in a believer's life. You, it explains everything. It explains life. It explains death. It explains life after death. What's going to happen can all be found in the word of the living God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It can be found in the word of the living God. I have a few scriptures I want you to go to this morning. So we're going to go through them this morning. And I'm telling you, the word of God is the word of God. It remains the same. It does not change based on your emotions. It does not change based on the seasons. It does not change based on a person's opinion. The word of God remains the word of God. No matter how an individual may see it, the word of God remains the word of God. So Isaiah chapter eight and looking at verse 20, Isaiah chapter eight and looking at verse 20, he said to the law and to the testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, he said, it's because there's no light in them. See, if you are talking like the world and have fear like the world, it's because the word of God is not that the word of God is not powerful. I'm going to get to that. It's not that the word of God cannot deliver and heal. It's that you're not putting your faith in the word, but you're putting your faith in what you're hearing from the news. You put your faith in what you're hearing from scientists. I'm putting my faith in what I'm hearing from God. Now, certain practices I practice. I practice washing my hands. I practice putting a mask on when I go into a place of establishment. But my life is not conducive to that. My life is conducive to the word of God. You see, when I'm away from everybody, it's the word that upholds me. It's the word that keeps my sanity. It's the word of God. So if you're not speaking according to the word of God, what are you speaking according to? Is your vocabulary according to the news and what news people say? We need to pray for the elective leaders that they make the right decision, that they are not operating out of fear. They're not causing people to be fearful. But I believe that God has allowed this 
for us to see ourselves and for us to get back to what truly matters and what truly matters and that will that could help this whole universe is the word of God. Because the word of God cannot fail because God cannot fail. God is faithful and God is his word. Matter of fact, before I move on, let me go to John chapter one and verse one, which many of you know. But I want you to hear this and what John the Revelator said about the word of God. He said, in the beginning was the word. There was in the beginning before anything existed was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning, the word with God. All things were made through him. All things were made through who? The word. And without him, nothing was made. Okay? So, and then it goes on, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. But I want you to realize that the word existed long before man was ever created. God don't need man's help. Man needs God's help. And what he needs to do is to look at what God it has commanded us and to live by the principles and then you would enjoy the wonderful benefits of the word of God. So if you're not speaking the word of God, then you have to operate by fear. Or you operate by your emotions. Or you operate by your hearing. But when you trust in the word of God, you're trusting in God because God is his word. Turn your Bibles to Isaiah, the 51st chapter, I mean, 50, 55th verse, and look at verse number 11. Look at verse number 11, a powerful, powerful verse, powerful verse, 55 and 11. Look what it says. God, Isaiah says, God said, so shall my word. Whose word? God says, my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. Listen, it shall not return to who? Me. God says, it shall not return to me what? Void, but it shall. Listen, I know you're going through things. I know sometimes sickness. I know sometimes financial difficulty. But the Bible says it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing where I have sent it. So when God sent his word and when you live by faith in the word, it has to bring about what God has said. It cannot come back empty. It cannot come back void. But here's the caveat. It doesn't work on your timetable. It works on God's timetable. Look what it says. He said it go forth out of my mouth and it shall not return to me. What? Empty. It shall accomplish. Listen, shall. It shall accomplish what I please. So when God sent his word out, guess what? Sometimes it look like it's the, the delay. It looks like you've been praying and crying. Ain't nothing changing. It's changing. You have to believe in change before you see it. You have to believe the word before it's manifested. Why? Because I put my faith in God's word because one thing, God can't fail. The other thing, God cannot lie. If God sent his word out, just be patient. Learn to worship God in the moment that you're waiting for him to move on your behalf. Don't lose your faith in God. Don't lose your trust in God because of how people live or how pastors live or how bishops live. You got to have your own relationship with God independent of man. Listen, I seen the capture in the Bible in, in and in a Facebook and it says this preacher said, just because God uses you doesn't make you greater than anybody else, nor me. We should still humble ourselves and give God the glory no matter how much he uses us because what we actually do, whether we help, whether we pray, whether we give, whether we service, it's your reasonable service. It's what you should do 
as a believer. So God says, so my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It's what God said that matters. Because in the end, it's what God says that's going to judge all of us. Amen. So let's go to Matthew and let's go to the 14th chapter of Matthew. And let's look at a verse that's often used, but oftentimes misunderstood. So Matthew, the 14th chapter, the 36th and the 37th verse. Matthew, I think it's 14. I might have got that one wrong, but I thought it was Matthew 14, 36 and 37, but there's no 37. The one I was looking at was the scripture says that man shall give an account for every idle word that he speaks out of his mouth. And I start meditating on that. What's an idle word? An idle word is a word that, that is, is contrary to the word of God. That's the idle word that a man going to get account for because he don't put his faith in God's word. Sometimes when we talk, we talk against God's word. We talk like God's word don't have no power. We talk like God's word can accomplish what he what he meant for it to accomplish in our lives. Sometimes the word of God comes for correction. Sometimes it comes to give us revelation. Sometimes it comes to expose us. But however it comes is to bring you to a place where where you would know that God is perfecting you for a time that you will learn to worship him. How? Worship him in spirit and Worship him in truth. So every idle word that a man may speak when it talks about an idle word is to say something opposite than what the word of God has declared. Because the word of God says by his stripes, I'm healed. Do you believe that? Do you really believe that? Do you believe that? If I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all. Do you believe that? Do you believe that when God forgives you, no matter what you've done, the blood can cover it. No matter what, what sin you committed, the blood can cover it. Do you believe that? Yeah, you're going to feel some shame when you sin. You're going to feel some remorse that the spirit of God is in you. But do you believe the word of God or are you speaking an idle word? I hope God come through. I don't know. I, 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 that's the, I, 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 don't say, I don't talk like that because if the word of God said it, then I, I believe it, I trust in it, and I live by it. Why? Because the word is true. How do I know the word is true? Turn your Bible to John 17, 17. Here again, we go into the Bible. I don't care what man say. I don't care. Listen, thank God for scientists. Thank God for doctors. But the one that has the answer is God. Put your trust in God. When you go to the doctor, put your trust in God. When you take medicine, put your trust in God. That the medicine is going to do what God has given man the understanding and revelation to do to help our bodies if we get sick. If we have to go for surgery, we want the best, we want the best surgeon. So I pray to God about the surgeon. What surgeon, God? God, give me a good surgeon. You see, listen, stop all this foolishness. Sometimes you have to go to doctor. Just like if you don't brush your teeth and get cavities, you got to go see the dentist. See, because God wants you to trust in the provisions that he made. Police officers are not here for the wicked. They're here to protect the righteous. The same for the army. Doctors are here to help those who are sick. God sent them. Everything is established and ordered by God. God gives man the ingenuity. God gives man the understanding. God gives man the revelation to do what he does. Man cannot come up with this on his own. God gives it to him. God tell, told him how to heal polio. God told him how to make certain vaccines. It's God that gives man the insight to help who? The righteous. Those who believe that God is God and Jesus Christ is the son of God. God loves you. God's going to protect you. God's going to provide for you if you trust in his word. Remember, without faith, you cannot what? Please, God. So let's get through this in the time that we have. 
John 17, 17. What is true? Listen to what it said. Jesus said, Lord, sanctify, talking about the disciples. I don't want to take the scripture out of context. He says, sanctify them by your truth. What's truth? Look at it. Your word is true. If anything in the world is true, God's word is true. And I know sometimes it's difficult. I know sometimes things happen in our lives and we wonder where God is. Listen, the Bible says God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And found in Isaiah. If that's true, I don't care what we go through. God is with us. You're never lonely. You just feel lonely. Your mind tell you you're lonely. But God is there. If you're a child of God, God is there. If you ask God for peace, he'll give you peace. If you ask God for comfort, he'll give you comfort. But you have to have faith in the word that what he said he's able to do and he's able to accomplish. Guess what? To help you get through life, to help you get through this pandemic, to help you not be fearful like everybody else is fearful. God has created you to be a light and to shine your light and to share your faith that no matter what happens, you have to have the testimony of the prophets. Whether I live or whether I die, I live unto the Lord. Why? Because I belong to God. How do I know? Because guess what? The word told me. The word said if I die, uh, to be absent from the body is it being present with the Lord. Do you believe that? I believe it with all my heart. If I, w I woke up for the gift of today to carry out God's will. Somebody say amen. Amen. So what is truth? Thy word, God, thy word supersedes the Constitution. Thy word supersedes law. Thy word supersedes all things. But if you really look at the word of God, the word of the law is lined up on the word of God. That's why bank robbers and cooks and murderers and thieves and liars don't get away. Because it's based on what? The word of God. So what's the problem? The problem is you got to put your faith in the word and stop putting your faith in people. It's OK to trust people. It's OK to love people. It's OK to listen to wise counsel. But the wisest counsel you can get is the word of God. The wisest counsel you can get on decision making is the word of God. It's the word of God. Listen, if you trust God and his word, people keep saying, I want to hear God. I want to hear God. Listen. I hear God every day. He gave me 66 books. 39 in the Old Testament, 26 in the New. I'm looking every day and trusting in God's word. It keeps me sane. With all of the killing that's happening with, with African Americans and, and all the injustice, it's the word of God that keeps me insane. It's the word of God that's going to judge and bring every unruly work to, to uh, uh, pro fruition and expose it because God is a God of justice based on what? The word of God. Go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Your trust has to be in the word of God. Stop thinking your pastor, your pastor's not God. I'm not God. No, no man is God. I'm only delivering as a spokesman the word of God. I have no greater anointing than you have. I have no greater power than you have. If you put the word of God into action, God would do the miraculous through you that he may use you, that you may shine your light and talk about the goodness of God. Now, you know, some of y'all need to hit that button, that, 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 that heart button. You know God loves us. You know God gave us chance at the chance at the chance and his grace he pulled out on us. You know he did. I know he did. God is awesome. Hebrews 4 and 12. Look what it says about the word of God. It says, for the word of God is living. Hallelujah. And powerful. So the word of God is living and powerful. Glory be to God. Listen, I'm talking about the word of God. See, look, the government can say this. Everybody waiting on the stimulus check. When the stimulus money worn out, you're going to need God. They talking about food shortage. Listen, it's time to turn back to the word. It's time to start meditating on the word. Why? For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, 
piercing even the division of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. It's the word of God that judges man. You don't need nobody to tell you when you're wrong. The word of God will judge you from the inside. It deals with your soul. It exposes who we really are because sometimes a lot of us just fakes. We give the appearance of what we want people to see or what we want people to think. But the word of God pulls back, opens up the veil of your heart, and it's, the word exposes it. It comes into you and say, hey, look, you need to get this right. It tells us how to do that. It's the word that tells us how to raise our children. It's the word that tells us how to how, how to put up with people. The Bible says, pray for those that persecute you. How many Christians practice that? Pray for those that persecute you. Pray for those that say all oh, manner of evil against you. See, what the problem we have is that people want to obey what they want to obey that makes them comfortable. But the word of God puts you in a place where either you obey God, th th that you can enjoy the benefits of, of obedience when I obey God. When I obey God, listen, it puts the temptation of the enemy at flight. Yes, it does. Because to obey God means I have faith in his word. I believe God's word. And so if I have faith in it, I'm going to demonstrate it by my attitude, by my behavior, by how I talk. I'm not going to talk negatively. I'm not going to say, woe is me or we're in trouble. My trust is in the living God. And so I'm encouraging you today. I'm, I'm telling you today. This coronavirus is only a rehearsal for what's coming. Yes, it's a rehearsal. Because if you can't get through this trusting God, how are you going to get through a famine? How are you going to get through when things really go bad? That's why you have to now arm yourself and build yourself up. Build yourself up how? By meditating on the word of God. Putting the word of God. Listen, when I put the word of God in, in practice, demons tremble when I obey the word of God. Because they realize when I obey the word, there's power being released and demonstrated over sin and temptation. Oh, yeah, you become you can become victorious over sin and temptation when you put the word into practice. Why? Because you believe it. When you believe something, can't nobody stop you. When you believe something, I don't care what anybody says, they cannot stop you. Nothing can stop you. The only person can stop you. You. is when you stop believing in what God has said. So let me read that again. Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two edged swords, piercing even the division of soul and spirit and joint and marrow and is a discerner of the of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. You can't hide nothing from God. God loves you so much. He'll correct you. God loves you so much. He'll expose you. God loves you so much. He'll take you down to the to the bottom of the gutter so he can bring you up much better. But why go there? Why go down to the gutter? Why go down till you get so, so, so depressed and so miserable when you can stand up on top of the word of God and God upholds you? God is a corrector because he's a loving father. He's a loving mother. And he says he chastised those that he loved. Let's go real quick in the time that I have. Matthew, the 24th chapter and the 35th verse. 24 chapter 35th verse. Look what God says. Jesus saying, the, the son of the living God, the one who died for us, the one who, who shed his blood, his blood covers me. You can't see it, but it covers me. I'm covered by the blood. Satan knows I belong to God. Two things. One, I'm covered by the blood. Number two, I'm filled with the spirit of God. That's why when I sin, boy, it tears me up. Boy, I, I, I feel separated from God. I, I don't feel a piece of God, so I repent because I don't like that place. I don't like that place. I, I don't like it. I want to stay in his presence. Matthew 24 and 35. Look what it says. We're almost done. Heaven and earth shall what? Will. It said will what? 
passed away. This, is, this place not going to be here forever. You saving up. It's all right to have a 401k. It's all right to have a good savings so you can retire. Some of y'all are not going to get a chance to retire because Jesus is going to come. Your retirement is going to be eternal life. Glory be to God. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Where I get that from? Go over to Revelations real quick. Revelations 21. Here's a backup to that. Hallelujah. John the Revelator received revelation from God on the Isle of Patmos. Look what he says in Revelations 21 and verse 1. He says, John said, now I saw, John said, I saw this with my eyes. I'm an eyewitness. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. They're not going to be here. All your possessions that you trust in, everything you trust in is going to vanish away. Look what John says. For the first heaven and the first earth shall pass away. Also, there shall be no more sea. John said, and I saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem coming down of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And so if you're making plans to be here forever, it's not going to happen. A new heaven and a new earth. I believe God. If God can create a world, if God can make him a man, if God can send a redeemer, surely God can make a new heaven and a new earth where there be no sin. No sin, no sickness, no disease. Glory be to God. I believe God. See, I know I'm going to die. I know I'm going to die. But see, I'm going to lose my physical presence. But I'm not going to lose my eternal presence. Because when I die, I am going to be in the presence of God. So death will be like blinking your eye for me. Bam, I'm living. I live to die, but I die to live. That's why I honor God in his word. I obey God in his word because I believe I got Jesus said it's going to be a new he heaven and earth going to pass away. John said I saw a new heaven and a new earth. I believe God's word. I believe what God has said. Go to 1 Peter. Chapter 1. 1 Peter in your New Testament. Chapter 1. Where do I live by? I live by the word of God. Hallelujah. I had some friends that I work with, didn't get a chance to retire. Didn't get a chance to enjoy their retirement. They retired. Some died a week after. Some died five years later. They didn't live very long. They worked their whole life, saved up to all their 401k, invested their monies in stock, and never got a chance to enjoy it because their trust was in their job. Their trust was in their future that they had made in their mind, and they did not realize there was a day of death. And without Jesus Christ, that's a horrible day. And I don't want you to have a horrible day. I want you to have a glorious day knowing that Jesus Christ is a son of God. Look what it says in verse. Matter of fact, let me let me let me read verse 24. He said, all flesh is grass. I cut grass every week because it grows and I have to cut it. He said, all flesh is as grass. And all the glory of man as a flower of grass. So no matter what you accomplish, no matter how many great things men have accomplished and women have accomplished, no matter how many great things they have invented or many great things they have done through uh, uh, athletics or they have done through landing on the moon, no matter how many great things they have done, he said it's like a flower that faded away when it comes to standing before an awesome God. To so the grass withereth. And the flower falls away. But look at this. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. <laughs> Glory be to God. The word of the God cannot be stopped. Cannot be stopped by your emotions. Can't be stopped by men's lies who take the word of God and use it for their own, own purpose. They only use it in order for, to, to, to expand their kingdom, to expand their wealth, to expand their church, and to get as many members as they can without giving them the truth. I'm giving you truth. 
If the Bible says there's a hell, there is a hell for the godless of those who reject Jesus Christ. There are people who say God is not fair. Thank you. Who say God is not fair, but God is fair. He's a righteous God and God lets you choose whether you're going to serve him or not. That's why he told the people of Israel, you choose this day who you will serve. He even said on one occasion, if God be God, then serve him. If God ain't God, then leave him alone because he can't be nothing but God and God can't be anything but his word. If he said it, shall he not bring it to pass? Last scripture, go to Deuteronomy. Number eight, the eighth chapter and the third verse. Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter and the third verse. You can also find this. Jesus quoted it in Matthew chapter four and four. But God told the people of Israel when they came out of Egypt and before they got to the promised land, this is what God said. Matter of fact, I'm going to read one to three. He said, every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply. It's still good today. The word still good today. It's still good today. And go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. Talk to people of Israel. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all these 40 years in the wilderness. All the time we spent in sin. All the time we spent separated from God. God was protecting you and I. Listen. To humble you and to test you, told the people of Israel, to know that, that what was in your heart, God knows what's in your heart, whether you would keep his commandment or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, manna, which you did not know, nor your fathers know, that he might make you to know. Listen, man shall not live by, by bread alone. This is still good for today. The same word that was quoted over 2,000 years plus is the same word that's operating today. Listen, shall not live by bread alone. But man, but mankind, mankind, mankind has left his first love. He has left God. Man, but man shall live by every word, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. Every word. It don't, it don't go away. It don't change. The word of God remains the same. It is the word of God. Hallelujah. It is his word that I live by, his word that keeps me. It is his word that watches over me. It is God's word. So today I'm asking you, if you're not saved, what are you living by? If you're not saved and you're not serving God, you're not living by his word, you're living by something. The enemy is controlling you. Temptation has overtaken you, overtaken you. It's God that can deliver you. How? Through the word of God. Through the word of God. It is what delivers us. It's what heals us. It gives us knowledge of life. It tells us how to treat our wives. It tells us how to obtain long life. It tells us what to trust in. So listen, if you don't know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, I don't care you in your home. If you would confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, that Jesus Christ is the son of God and he is and confess your sins and ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins and ask Jesus that you want him to be Lord of your life and father forgive me and come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and Savior by faith even though I don't see you even if I can't feel you. I'm speaking your word according to Romans chapter 10 verse 8 and 9 father. I believe that if I ask you to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness and come into my heart even if you're a backslider God will forgive you and restore you. God is, is always reaching out his arms are stretched wide. He's able to help you. He's able to strengthen you during these difficult times and to keep your sanity. All you have to do is ask him to come in. And he will. Why do I know that? Because the word says so. 
and thousands upon millions of people have made a confession of faith. The question is, would you make that confession today? Would you ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart? I can't get you into heaven based on my goodness. I can't get you into heaven based on me preaching the word. You get into heaven based on your faith in Jesus and the finished work on the cross and the shedding of his blood that atones for our sins that give you access into the very place where God sits. I want to thank you for watching the program tonight, this morning. I want to thank you for your prayers. I want to thank my church. Thank you so much for your giving. Thank you for sustaining us while we're away. You know, I don't believe in tithing. I believe in giving. I'm going to start a teaching on that on Friday coming up. And I want you to realize God wants you to, to be, uh, uh, have free will, willing to do. God don't force nobody to do nothing. He don't force you to get saved. He don't force you to believe. That's your choice. That's the loving God we serve. So thank you for listening. May the grace of God keep you and watch over you. May the peace of God keep us until we gather again, that we continue to pray, we continue to worship, we continue to live by the principles of the word of God, even when we ridicule, even when we talked about, we stand on what we believe. Because if you believe, you will not be moved. To the glory and the grace of God, bless you and honor you on this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for watching the broadcast again on this Sunday. Don't forget to tune in Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Minister Forrest, a great man of God, great speaker of God, is going to bring forth the word. Please chime in and listen to what God is saying to him. Amen. I'll be online doing a watch party, and I pray that you will join in too as we continue to teach and to preach the word of God in faithfulness according to his word. In Jesus' name, God bless you all. Amen.